Go. Hey everybody, Mike Miller, Herald Times, joined by columnist Jeremy Price, coming to you from Assembly Hall. It feels like we, almost every Scoop Talk we've done down the stretch here, at least this month, it feels like we've come from a different vantage point. Uh, now here on the south baseline of Assembly Hall. This was my seat for today. This, this is a really sweet seat. You're nice. right next to the visitor's bench. You I can the, see every missed call right here. Yeah. There yeah. are a lot of them. Yeah. Again. Again. Well. Both sides. Yes. To yes. be clear, I'm I'm not taking sides here. I'm just generally saying I am <laughs> against the refereeing in college basketball. It's period. not good. It's not good at all. Anyway, uh, those who were here, and there were a lot of them who were here today, actually. Uh, really impressive crowd, just given the, the NIT and given it's Saturday afternoon, a lot of other things going on both here in Bloomington and around the state. Uh, big crowd was on him here to see Indiana's 63-60 win over Arkansas here in the second round of the NIT. Uh, IU does it again. Uh, not a pretty game of basketball, per se. Uh, it was funny. I was I, in the visitor's locker room. They had written on the whiteboard, uh, street fight. And uh, it certainly looked uh, looked the part uh, for a large stretch of this. Indiana had some Especially troubles. Especially that last six, seven minutes. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I don't think there was a single field goal in the no. final five minutes. No. Uh, uh, Arkansas went darn near seven minutes, I think, without a field goal, if I'm correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it was it was definitely ugly basketball. Certainly, IU had some troubles uh, solving the press uh, that uh, Arkansas is so known for with, uh, with Mike Anderson. Um, but, uh, once again, you got uh, the best possible version of Devontae Green uh, to kind of make up for what you lost with Romeo Langford. You had some other guys uh, filling in here, here and there. I thought Rob Finnessy was really good, obviously, with his ability to really settle Indiana down and, and figure out the press as the game wore on. Juwan Morgan was Juwan Morgan. Uh, but really, uh, we're back to talking about Devontae Green because uh, I think it's just kind of become clear here in this month as Indiana now pushes for an NIT title. Uh, if if they're able to accomplish that, they're, it's going to be, be because of uh, Devontae Green. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the the renaissance story of the season, really, Incredible. Devontae Green. I mean, uh, I even tweeted this today that, you know, six weeks ago, Indiana fans were like, I hope Devontae Green will transfer. Right now, everybody's changed that tune to Devontae better not transfer, because if he does, who's going to score yeah. next year? So mm-hmm. it's, it's quite a change. Uh, and, you know, it's one of those things that this is kind of the Devontae Green we thought we might could get coming into this season. I don't know if we thought... He'd be this productive necessarily in terms of points, but we thought there was the potential there to do that. And, and obviously, he was hurt early in the year. Had the was it his the groin injury? Yes. Yeah, I, I can't even keep track of all the injuries this team has had at this point. Had the groin injury early in the year, missed some games, comes back, then has the suspension for three games in uh, late January, early February, um, and all of a sudden here, you know, Indiana's won six of the last seven, and, and Archie Miller basically said. We might not have won any of those games without Devontae Green, and I think that's fair. I mean, he has oh, yeah. been the difference maker for this team. No, absolutely. I mean, he's, you look at the past six games, uh, he's averaging 16 points. He's shooting 55% from three. Obviously, that, that, that number is boosted from his 8-for-10 showing in the Ohio State game in the Big Ten tournament. But uh, no less, I mean, the guy, he's, he's given you exactly what you've needed in certain spurts. Here. I mean, obviously, the thing with Devontae Green is you're, you're consistently, or at least uh, for the bulk of his first two and a half, three years, you're, you're taking the good with the bad, and oftentimes the bad has, it, it's been hard to overshadow the bad with the good. It's just been, you know, the, the balance hasn't been there. Uh, and, and certainly, there are still the, the bad moments with Devontae Green. Right. He had four turnovers today, led the team. Uh, one was a pretty egregious entry pass to Deron Davis. It just went straight to an Arkansas player. Um, you know, right at the end of the game, Indiana's up three. Uh, Archie Miller wants to foul, as they always do. Uh, and Devontae Green just lost his man, didn't foul in the situation. Arkansas was able to get one last shot off uh, with a chance to tie this game in the final seconds. Uh, luckily for Indiana, and, and certainly I think Devontae Green, uh, that shot did not go in. So, you know, you are still riding the good with the bad. But, um, A, there's been a lot more good. And, and, and with that good, uh, with just the, the, the point production, uh, everything he's really given you, um, really on both ends of the floor. I thought I, I didn't really talk, touch on this in my story, but uh, he's given a lot defensively too. I feel you know he and Rob Finnessy, uh, you, you know you can certainly see what they do in the box yeah. score offensively. But both guys have been really really good, especially these last two games, uh, just giving Indiana a presence on the defensive end. But again, now that uh, I think not only is there more balance uh, to Devontae Green, uh, it, it's almost skewed maybe more toward the positive as far as production and, and things to point toward. Yeah, and, and he had 11 defensive rebounds in addition to just the 
getting the hands in, knocking the ball loose, all those kind of plays as well. Uh, I think what's interesting in this is part of the problem with Devontae Green before is Devontae Green would come off the bench. If he went into bad mode to start out with, you know, some turnovers, some bonehead plays, some bad shots, whatever, then it was back to the bench and sparingly would we see him again. Now Indiana's in a position where it's basically forced to just kind of ride with him for better or worse, and what that's done is give him the chance for the good to outweigh the bad, basically. As the volume of playing time increases, it gives him more chance to succeed, basically, and and that's what's happened here. And I think the other thing is he's played more with Rob Finnessy now than what he did yeah. before, and so those two have made a, a pretty good pairing. Uh, as long as you leave Finnessy in charge of the decision-making yes. against yes. pressure yes. and those kind of situations, yes. you're in good shape, and then you'll let Devontae kind of do his thing once you get the ball across half court. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that's been the balance that this team has tried to find with these guys. And right now it's working. And with the absence of Romeo Langford, obviously it's it's critical that it does work or this team would be sitting at home already. Yeah, uh, still not sure uh, Romeo Langford's status uh, moving forward. Obviously was not not available today, did not play, was, was with the team, was uh, just in sweats, he was on the bench, but uh, not available to actually play. Um, you know, Archie Miller said even just from the beginning of this tournament that you know maybe the longer they go, maybe the deeper they get. Uh, potentially, that that gives uh, Romeo Langford some some quote unquote time to, to get his back healed. Um, you know, I, I think that you know reasonable people can can debate whether or not you know if Indiana was in the NCAA tournament, if Romeo Langford would be playing in these games right now. Uh, but you do wonder, you know, if if you are making a run, and you're in that stage in Madison Square Garden, and obviously you'd have. At that point, a couple weeks there to, to rest your back and get ready and, and get whatever treatment you need if you're Romeo Langford. If maybe he doesn't uh, decide to return, or if not decide to return, if he's just able to return, uh, you know, from that back issue. Yeah, I think um, if you read between the lines of what Archie Miller had to say today, I think you come away with the thought that it's highly unlikely that Romeo is going to play on Tuesday in the quarterfinal game. Uh, it would only be if they get to New York, which would give him basically another week and a half. Yeah because the semifinals aren't until April 2nd. So uh, that would give him some time to potentially get healthy enough to play. Uh, you know, Archie said, well, hopefully we can get him back, and if he's able to, pull, to go, he'll go. But my read on that was basically it's highly unlikely he's going to be ready to go by Tuesday. Um, and, and I think part of that is, like you said, you know, maybe if this was an NCAA tournament and there was really something more on the line, uh, I think – in this situation, they want to make sure, and probably Romeo wants to make sure, that he's fully healthy if he's going to go back out there. You don't want to go back out there, you know, trying to work around a bad back or whatever, and then you tweak something else or whatever the case may be. So, anyway, I think the team we've seen, the, the first two games of the NIT is the team we're going to see on Tuesday. And this team is not bad. It's certainly not without its flaws, but... Um, you're getting energy from guys like, uh, you know, Devontae Green with his scoring production. Devon, I mean, heck, even, you know, Deron Davis is jumping on the floor for loose balls. I mean, it's a team that's engaged right now, which I think is definitely positive to see, just kind of given, you know, I hate to belabor this, this NCAA tournament disappointment thing, but it was a very real thing for this team that, you know, you know right or wrong, definitely believed it was a tournament team, tournament caliber, and uh, felt uh, deflated, crestfallen on, on Sunday evening when it saw it was not, uh, not in the tournament everyone cares about. Uh, but actually getting to this point, you know, Archie Miller said it himself that once you get a couple games into the NIT, you know, and I think anyone anyone who watches basketball or even pays even cursory attention to the NIT knows, you know, these first few games, these first couple rounds, it's more about uh, desire often than it is about talent. And, you know, once you get those first couple wins and then you get locked in and you start to see, well, all right, we're a win away from going to Madison Square Garden and we're in a, you know, a tournament we can win and, and bring home a trophy. You know, it's not the trophy anyone, you know, starts the year wanting to, wanting to claim, but it's a trophy nonetheless. And, um, I, I do think that that's a, a positive takeaway from this team so far, that uh, they're engaged, that they uh, have kind of uh, come to terms with where they are and, and reckoned with reality in the sense that they're in it to win it. They're here, and you're seeing guys like you know, Deron Davis is jumping on the floor for loose balls. You know, Zach McRoberts is not not anywhere near uh, full health, but uh, playing through his own injuries, uh, wanting to make the most of the end of his career. And you're just seeing a lot of, I, I just think, engagement, energy, um, you know, I, I I want to say the word urgency, although we're still seeing a team that's uh, you know consistently tentative at times in games. But uh, uh, I do think the buy-in is there. You know, for as ugly as this game was at times today, uh, they played hard. Both teams played hard, so um, I think you got to like that. Yeah, I think the the, the word Duran used post game when I was talking to him was just competing, basically, and and 
down the stretch in the first half, I think Arkansas scored three points over the final six plus minutes of the first half. They didn't score a field goal almost seven minutes of the second half. And, you know, he basically ascribed that to this team just, you know, being willing to compete. Uh, but even outside those minutes, like you mentioned, you know, Zach McRoberts, uh, I talked to him quite a bit about McRoberts today, you know, a guy that Archie Miller calls 60 to 65%. But yeah. McRoberts makes a difference. He only played 10 minutes and 22 seconds, but he was a plus 12, highest of anybody that saw the floor today. Davis was second at plus 10. But, you know, McRoberts blocked a shot, kept alive a, uh, an offensive rebound that Indiana ultimately scored off of, grabbed a couple of rebounds, committed a couple of fouls, and was just generally a pest like Zach McRoberts is out there. And that makes a difference for this team. And, and, you know, we try to pinpoint, you know, okay, Devontae Green was hurt, and that really hurt this team. And Rob Finnessy was hurt with a concussion and slow to come back, and that really hurt this team. And Race Thompson missed so much of the year, and he wasn't available again today coming off the sickness. And that hurt this team. Add McRoberts to that list. Obviously, he missed some games early in the year with the back. Then he missed some games with the foot. He's still not healthy. I mean, you combine all those things, it's not difficult to see where this team has had trouble kind of coming together. But, you know, one stat I ran across just looking it up because I was curious today this was the 13th game that Indiana's played decided by one possession or in overtime. Mm -hmm. When Zach McRoberts has played double-digit minutes in those games, Indiana's 5-2. and two. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, there's just little things like that that make such a difference for this team. Uh, and then the flip side of that is Justin Smith basically went back into Iowa mode yeah. in the second half today. He was benched with, I think, 17.45 or thereabouts to play in the second half. Didn't play again until the final minute when Archie put him into just for defensive purposes, basically. And, mm -hmm. and so this team is actually at the point where at least I think Archie Miller has some options to pull guys in, put guys in, pull guys out, play with some different lineups, kind of ride the hot hand if it's there. You know, Evan Fitzner has been, I wouldn't say spectacular down the stretch of this season, but he's given this team something here and mm -hmm. there. He's made a shot here or there. He's grabbed a rebound, had an offensive putback. Uh, Really so, athletic player. So, yes. you know, this this team has found different contributions from different guys in different ways, and it just comes down to being willing and having the desire to compete, and that's what's gotten them through these first couple of games. Yep. Arkansas gave Indiana its first loss of the year back on uh, November 18th, and uh, close one again here today. Another one went right down the wire. Indiana survived this one, was not willing to let Arkansas give them uh, its last uh loss of the season so indiana plays on uh we do know that the next game will be on tuesday night here at assembly hall uh, as of right now we do not know the opponent it'll be either wichita state or clemson uh, also waiting on a time it'll be either seven or nine o'clock i uh, believe it'll be on espn uh one of the espn one of the espn yeah. so it'll be on t you'll, you'll be able to see it if you want uh but yeah we will uh, await uh you know it we'll see uh but uh right now this is a team that uh, has again kind of come to terms with where it is in the postseason and is uh, doing what it can to, to see if the season continues on. So, And like the team, we'll show up here one more time. One more time. That's it. All right. See you guys. <laughs>